This short video demonstrates how to use version 2.0 of RPC Firewall. In this lab, we have a domain controller where we already downloaded the RPC Firewall from the release page of our Git repository. Simply download the zip package and extract on the host you wish to protect. If you need more information about RPC or the RPC Firewall, the README page contains links to relevant materials. Also, the README itself contains a lot of valuable information, which we won't cover in this short video. Once downloaded, the first command we should get to know is the status command. This shows us the deployment status of both the RPC filters and the RPC firewall itself. Currently, we can see that there are no installed filters, the RPC firewall service is not installed, the event log is not configured, and we don't have any protected processes. For starters, I want to make sure that the RPC firewall is working correctly. What we will do is use the out-of-the-box configuration file, downloaded with the package which simply audits all remote RPC calls and writes them to an event log without blocking anything. Again, we can use the status command to make sure that the loaded configuration matches our intention. Notice that we can now see exactly which processes are protected. Once RPC activity occurs, you can find it in the event log under Applications. Now that everything is set up, we can start performing remote attacks against our domain controller. Throughout this demo, we will use these four consoles. Each console resides on the attacker's machine and is used to execute different attacks. We won't discuss the nature of each attack besides pointing out that these are just a handful of examples of attacks that rely on RPC to work. The first is Petit Potem, a type of relay attack. You may notice that the attack works. The second is WMIC, which takes a short while to conclude. The third is PSExec. And finally, we will run the DC sync command to steal the NTLM hashes from the domain controller. After this is done, we should notice that all attacks were successful, including the remote WMI attack. This is not surprising as we set our firewall to audit only, so no RPC interface is blocked. To start protecting our domain controller, first we have to stop our existing deployment. Next, we will use a template configuration of RPC filters we can use to block RPC attacks. This template and a couple others can be found in our Git repository. Now we will install the RPC filters module and start it, which will load our updated configuration. Again, we should always run the status command to see what the changes are that were updated to the deployment. Notice that there are many blocked interfaces in this configuration. This is why auditing is required. There may be environments that use some of these interfaces. Now, we will come back to the four remote attacks that we saw earlier and run them again. Notice that the Petit Potem attack failed. PSExec also failed because of access denied. Notice that the DC sync actually worked, so this was not blocked by the RPC filters. And finally, the remote WMI attack also failed. So only one attack, the DC sync, did not fail. The reason for this is because if we were to block the entire RPC interface used for the DC sync attack, we would have broken our domain. To get a more granular RPC defense, we need to use the RPC firewall. In this demo, we will again use a configuration template which deploys both RPC filters and the RPC firewall. Once we update the configuration file, we can start the RPC firewall.
we will also update everything just to make sure both modules are up to date with the latest configuration. Finally, like always, execute the status command to examine our updated deployment. Unsurprisingly, in this final round of attacks, we will notice that all the attacks will fail. Petit Potem failed like before. Also PSExec, WMIC, and now also the DC sync attack failed as we received access denied from the RPC firewall. Once we wish to stop RPC protections, we can simply issue the stop command. If we wish to uninstall the RPC firewall entirely, we will need to issue the uninstall command. In this case, we encountered a very common hiccup. The event viewer is not letting us remote one of the files used by the RPC firewall. So in this case, we can close the event viewer and run the uninstall command again. We hope that this resource will help more and more organizations start protecting their domain controllers and other sensitive servers with the RPC firewall.